Good morning, everyone. This is uh, Thad from the Reference and Readers Advisory Department of the Rawlings Library in Pueblo, Colorado. And uh, once again, thanks for joining me for uh, To Die For, um, doing a special uh, uh, morning edition of To Die For. And um, as we've uh, gone a little bit back to in-person programming, we haven't uh, done one of these since last month. So uh, thanks for joining me this morning. Um, anyways, um, sticking with the theme um, of uh, animal clothing, um, last time I showed you how to uh, um, tie-dye dog shirts, and then we had a little bit of a, a, a showing off, so to speak, of the dogs in their shirts. And and unfortunately, I, I don't have the showing off portion this time, but I do have some cool uh, um, bandanas to show you and um, a little bit of the process that went behind doing them. Um, so let's go ahead and dive in here. And real quick preface, so uh, the, and I think I explained it in the video, but anyways, the bandanas I'm using in the video are um, examples on just how to tie these items. Um, they're not actually um, the items uh, or the final items that you're going to see here. Um, however, the video uh, with the dyeing process is um, uh, the final result that you'll see here in about 10 minutes. So uh, uh, sit back and enjoy this tutorial. So this, uh, these rags here are not the actual, or bandanas I should say, are not the actual bandanas for um, that will be dyed. As you can see, they've already uh, received their fair amount of dye. I kind of use these as uh, little rags for mopping up uh, or cleaning up some of the dye around my dyeing station at home. So that's uh, why there's an assortment of colors. But we're going to use these as an example on how to tie these, which really isn't anything unspectacular and if you've been tuning into these for a while now then um, a lot of those basic uh, tying ideas you probably have down um, but anyway so I have two here uh, um, undetermined at this point how many will end up with when I uh, do the reveal but um, I, I still need to get those blanks and so I, I don't have those yet and it'll just kind of depend on how many I'm able to purchase. Um, but anyways, we're going to do this one as a spiral. So I'm just going to take my clothes pin, pinch the middle, and do a nice uh, twirl. And I may go ahead and dye these anyway, just see what happens. Kicks and giggles. this this little spiral that um, resembles kind of cinnamon roll and then go ahead and throw one band on and then probably two bands will be adequate for this. I'm 
So there's our tied spiral there. And then this next one, actually I can't recall if I've shown in a video how to do this pattern or not, but uh, um, for bandanas, I really like the uh, bullseye pattern. Um, so there's some little tiny rubber bands here, but for whatever reason, the, the bullseye ice dyed bandana is a real just groovy looking design and um, I don't do the bullseyes as much on shirts anymore, but it just really pops on a um, bandana. So usually what I end up doing is I'll just kind of kind of pick a portion and you could do the center or whatever, but I, I kind of like it on the kind of towards one of the corners. And so then just go ahead and while you have that pinched, uh, just get your rubber band and just get it on there pretty tight. And, and as small of rubber bands as possible. I mean, you can use bigger rubber bands. You'll just have to really wrap them over several times so it hold so they hold on there. Now. All right. And then I'm just going to continue. Yeah, I think kicks and giggles. I'll dye these two and then we can just see how they turn out as well. Um, but yeah, these are great. Um, of course, this is showing you this kind of with the ideas, giving it a, or is, And one more. I'm sure I have one more tiny rubber band. There we go. And actually, maybe I'll do two more. We're gonna go one more time there. I think in my bag here I saw the more real thin rubber band. Yeah, there it is. These real tiny thin rubber bands are great for bandanas. And so there's the basic idea for um, tying a couple bandanas. And then, like I said, we'll uh, ice dye these and then see what we come up. Okay, so I have uh, four bandanas tied here, and they're all uh, kind of lumped together and um, lumped together into this uh, piece of um, gallon jug carton. So uh, here's some soda ash. So I'm just going to, and this is one way of applying soda ash. Um, for ice dyes, you can do it this way. Um, I just bought these blanks, so I hadn't had time to soak them, and I want to make sure they're ready in time for the reveal Wednesday morning. Okay, so there's that, and then... Oops. So now I'm going to get some ice. And once again, yeah, many different ways you can do ice dye. You can put the dye down first and then the ice, or the ice and then the dye. Um, this is kind of my hunch of what it will hopefully look real cool is if I do the ice first. So I'm trying to think of some 
colors I don't have for uh, some of the bandanas that I already have. Okay, so we're going to go with, let's see, I want to start with, um, start with some bright yellow here. I'm just using a plastic spoon here. Seems to work pretty well. And so I'm going to do a good strip down the middle with the yellow. And here's the peach. Sorry for the ruckus in the background. I'm rinsing out some other some other threads. I like this peach. It's a real fine powder. It's real easy to work with. A handful of Dharma's dyes or kind of this fine powder and it's real nice for ice dyeing. Doesn't make a difference for liquid dyeing, but for ice dyeing it's easier to work with. And then let's see, so the peach and then I have off to the side here a uh, peony. This is a new one I've been working with lately. I, I really like it. Um, it's also a fine powder. Um, and originally I was thinking of putting shiitake mushroom at the end, but you know what? There's not a lot of space left, so I'll just go to the edges with the peony. All right, and these old infomercial for a rotisserie. I think it. The guy said, "Now we'll set it and forget it." <laughs> That's the. Okay, so uh, um, now time for the the big reveal. Let's see. All right. So this first one is an X pattern. And I think the peony dye is becoming one of my favorites because you get some really neat um, dye splits from it. And that's where this blue came from. It kind of split out of the peony. But uh, like that. I'm sorry, that this is rad. I'm really happy with how this turned out. And then here's one spiral. It's mostly the the peach and the yellow in there, and the yellow really making that peach more orange. But uh, kind of in the corner, you get a little bit of that peony and blue split, a little bit at the top there. And then this one split a lot. It's another spiral, um, but yeah, <laughs> once again, I'm pretty, pretty pleased with how this one turned out. And then the last one is our bullseye. And you get a little bit of that peony split there as well. But yeah, I really like how uh, the bullseye pattern, the ice dye, and the bandana how 
it all comes together and <laughs> just seems to work real well. But um, uh, thanks again, though, for uh, joining me. Um, I, I do apologize that uh, we don't have a little bit of a, a fashion show this time around, but um, um, we've briefly started to go back to uh, in-person programming here. So we have had a couple um, to die for classes here at Rawlings, but uh, as our building starts to um, undergo renovations, um, we won't be having those here. Um, so stay tuned. Um, it will be virtual next month, but I'm shooting for September to um, try and take this to uh, some of the branches, which is a project I'll be working on later today to um, get that um, initiated. But um, yeah, once again, thanks for uh, checking this out. Um, hope it adds a little color to your Wednesday. All right, and take care, everybody.